Hello students. So I'd like to walk you through some things with the wave speed investigation. So in period four, we uh, talked about some possible independent variables to, to test if we want to see what factors determine the speed of a wave. And I use the word factors, meaning what variables. So our class came up with this list, tension, distance, frequency, and amplitude. And the dependent variable is the speed of a wave. So in this document, I gave you a data table. And um, I want to show you how you can go about measuring speed as the dependent variable. So um, your independent variable will be whatever you choose to investigate. So what we're going to focus on in this video is the dependent variable. So um, I will first make a suggestion that you set this to oscillate, no end, and if you turn off damping, then it'll be a little easier to see the waves. Um, I could put tension in the middle if I want to just have sort of like a baseline. Um, I can put everything kind of in the middle if I want to just have that as a nice starting point. Okay, so there are some very useful features. The first is slow motion, which you can use to slow down everything. And the second thing is you can add a ruler and you can move the ruler around as well. There's also a timer that can be added here. And there's a reference line, but I don't think you'll need it for this one because this investigation is gonna be looking at the speed of the waves, which doesn't um, have anything to do with how tall they are. Okay, so, um, so let's do this. So first of all, I'm gonna put this in normal time. And I want you to see that you can start the stopwatch and you can stop the stopwatch and it's measuring speed um, accurately. It might appear a little bit choppy, but that's just, I think, because I'm doing the screen recording. So if you go into slow motion mode, then this clock also slows down um, by the same factor. So measuring five seconds in slow mo would be the same as measuring five seconds in normal mode. Because if you go back to normal, we can see that now the clock is going much faster. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit reset here. And um, the idea with measuring speed is that we can use the equation distance over time. So going back to this document here, whoops. It's my first time using Zoom, so bear with me here. There we go. Okay, speed equals distance divided by time. So let's choose a distance. Um, let's say we'll measure distance from zero centimeters to five centimeters. And that will make it five centimeters. We can do the same um, distance for all of them. I'm just going to copy and paste that down. Okay, now for the time, so I can tell myself, okay, I guess tell myself that I want to start the stopwatch when a crest reaches zero. And I want to stop it when it reaches five. So I'm going to just pick, um, I'm going to go, the next time it goes up, I'm going to start it. So now. I'm going to wait till that crest gets all the way to the five, which is going to be right over here, which is right now. Okay, so that was 1.40. And um, I should, in here, um, talk about what, the, what my constants are. So amplitude um, equals 0 0.61 centimeters. And I'm just taking that number from um, from here. Frequency equals 1.50 hertz. Damping is set to none. And tension is set to um, medium. OK. Um, and I should respond with this as a complete sentence. So the constants are 
the following. Okay, so there we go. So I've identified my variable, my constants, and so I don't need to include them in the data table because they're already described in my um, procedure. But um, actually, I, I may have um, written too much because let's say that I want to change tension. That's not going to be a constant. So um, that tension was medium. Um, so let's do this here. For tension, let's consider it to be low. We'll go low, and then um, at the other end of the spectrum would be high. In the middle, we can call that medium. And then we can call this other one here um, low medium. And this other setting medium high. So medium high would be like in between medium and high. Try to drag it there. I think right there. Oops. Uh, does it let me go in between? Okay, maybe it's not going to let me. Let's try that again. I'm going to zoom it bigger. Hmm. Okay. So, no problem. We'll just be restricted to only having three, um, three values for it. So, low, medium, and high it is. Okay, um, so we'll, we'll redo this time for that one. So we have it set on low tension. Okay, so I'm gonna reset the clock again. And um, I'm gonna start when, when the next crest gets to the zero, I'm gonna start it, and that's right now. And I'm gonna stop it when that crest that's going along here, now it's under the two. I'm going to stop it when that crest gets to the three. I'm sorry, to the five. And now. Okay. So that time was 4.08 seconds. And by the way, we can put units in the top of all this centimeters. Time is seconds, which would give speed in centimeters per second. Okay, so what I really want to show you here is, um, so this would be tension. What I really want to show you here is that we can calculate speed by doing distance divided by time. So this would be five centimeters divided by 4.08 seconds. And if we do the calculation using a calculator, five divided by 4.08, is 1.225. We're going to round that to 1.23 centimeters per second. Now, uh, I'm going to suggest this, um, which is that we do some uh, multiple trials here. So I think that would be best if we do this um, multiple tries. So insert row below. Um, So let's do a couple um, lows, a couple mediums. So this would be low um, trial one, low trial two, and then low average. And we would, just to be clear about what we mean by one, we mean trial one. And for this one, we mean trial two. And we can do a similar thing with um, medium and high. I'm going to insert one more row there. And then just change um, these labels to medium. Okay. 
So, um, and this will be the same for each one, five centimeters. Okay, so then we can repeat the trial, and then for doing the average, we would um, um, do the average by adding up to. So let's let's do that together. Okay, so I'm going to do this again. All the conditions are the same. I'm just going to reset my timer, and I'm going to start when. The next crest gets to the zero now. And if you're thinking, oh, Mr. Geller, this is too slow, then you can make it regular speed rather than slow speed. And it's almost there, almost there. And stop. All right, 4.06. So last time we got. 4.08, so at least I'm being pretty consistent there. So I'm bringing back my calculator. 5 divided by 4.06 is 1.23. Okay, um, I don't really need to put units next to all these because the units are at the top, so we know what they are. And the average, so just to remind you about calculating the average, it would be the sum of the two divided by two numbers. And of course, if the numbers are the same, then the average is going to be that. You can also think of average as the middle of the two numbers. Um, so it's pretty easy to do averages in your head. Once you have three numbers, then it's really much more complicated. You pretty much have to use the equation for average. Okay, um, so this is my introduction to how we can collect data of the speed of the wave now, this is for tension, and um, I encourage you to try other factors, like amplitude instead, or frequency, or tension. So, um, or anything else for that matter, that's a possible independent variable. Because if we understand the factors that control the speed of a wave, then we can understand waves, and we can understand how sound is affected by whatever instrument you might be playing, the speed of sound. Um, and it can also help us understand how different types of electromagnetic waves, like are radio waves slower than x-rays? If so, does that mean we should maybe make cell phones out of a different kind of wave that might be faster? So these are all basic foundational concepts of waves. All right, thanks for watching this video. And good luck and have fun investigating.